Hey everybody, it's Wendy with Cricut House Herbals. Welcome to another Facebook Live post. It's Thursday, 7 o'clock, and away we go. Tonight's topic, Earth Suit Maintenance 2. Don't bug me. I thought we would talk a little bit about what we're starting to experience here, especially in the central part of Arkansas, where we are greening up and getting outside and planting and clearing out and doing all kinds of fun stuff outside and now we are coming uh, coming into our relationship with the critters. We have ticks and chiggers and all kinds of things in Arkansas that are not fun and they kind of um, put a damper on being outside sometimes. So we're going to talk a little bit about that for a few minutes tonight. Before I go any further, I, for those of you that are new to our Facebook Live on Crooked House, I am a master herbalist and an educator. I live in the middle of the country in the Washita Mountains in Arkansas. I have been a master herbalist for eight years and <clears throat> I love what I do, grow all my own herbs, make all my own formulas, and I'm here to talk about alternative ways to live. So on that note, I have three, three things I would like to talk to you about tonight. One of them is natural ways to stay bug free. Also, I want you to know that right before this post um, airs, there is a link in the post before this one that will give you um, documents of tonight's topic and also some fun things for the kids. Okay, I always try to include something for them to do since they're home. <clears throat> so let's let's include them, shall we? Hey Justin, I see you. And Kelly, thank you for joining me. So anyway, the first topic that I'd like to cover really quickly is natural ways to stay bug free. I know that some of us don't really like to take a bath in DEET and all of the other kinds of toxic chemicals that we can <clears throat> get our hands on to um, keep the bugs away, but sometimes we feel like that's our only alternative because they're swarming us. Uh, and the chiggers are the thing here that really get to you because you can't see those buggers until after they're in you. So let's talk a little bit about some natural ways to repel insects and um, take care of that. <clears throat> Essential oils are one of the best ways to go about this because you can make a blend or and you can spray it on you you can rub it on you and you're not like slathered up in oily nasty messy stuff so i'm going to just list off a few essential oils and herbs and then you can take it from there remember this is my whole goal with this broadcast is to just provoke you and prom promote some critical thinking on your part and give you information. The rest is up to you. You can do, you can throw it in the trash or you can assimilate it and make it work for you in your lifestyle. All right. <clears throat> some of the most um, powerful essential oils are actually some of the simplest ones. Lemon. Lemon and citronella are very powerful mosquito repellents. There is also an herb called neem that is a really good herb and usually you can make an oil from it and it is good for your skin it's good for lots of other things but it also repels mosquitoes in a, in a pretty powerful way um, it has a lot of the same properties as DEET so it's a strong one and you might want to include that in whatever other things you're putting together put some neem in there I use it on my plants that's my insect repellent for my plants. Camphor and eucalypt, eucalyptus are also very good insect repellents and they're fairly easy to um, 
get your hands on. Cinnamon and tansy. Tansy is a nice little herb. They repel fleas. So if you've got um, a flea issue, which I have three dogs and two cats, and they're outside. <clears throat> I only have one dog that stays inside. So um, I will include these types of things in my insect repellent for my animals. Um, cinnamon, you have to keep a light touch, but they can handle some of it. Tansy is a great flea repellent. Thyme and peppermint repel flies and mosquitoes. And tea tree repels chiggers like a charm. So you've got this nice little cocktail of herbs here. Citronella is the one that you are probably most familiar with. And it, um, it is a beautiful plant. Those of you that live in Florida, perhaps, um, this would be a great potted plant on the four corners of your lovely screened in porch because um, it is very good at repelling mosquitoes. Any, uh, anybody who's got a hot tub or who's for that kind of thing. <clears throat> Give me a thumbs up if everybody's hearing me okay. Somebody send me a yes or a no. Okay. Hmm. It's kind of cloudy tonight and I just want to make sure my reception, my um, internet is, is holding up. Okay, so, oh good, thank you. Um, I make a product called Don't Bug Me, which is my insect repellent. It's what I wear, it's all I ever wear. And I don't end up with a chigger issue, I don't end up with mosquitoes or ticks or any of those things, unless I forget to put it on. It only takes one trip outside to the car and I can come back in and pull ticks off myself. So that is, you know, something you gotta remember to do is put it on. But it is called Don't Bug Me and it is on the Crooked House Herbals website if it's something that you might be interested in just purchasing. Otherwise, these are all good essential oils for you to start working with and playing around with to make your own blends. I also have another product called Anchors, Ankle Saver, which is another repellent that targets fleas even more. And it's got um, a lot of the same ones I just mentioned, but it uh, has clove and lavender and cedar in it as well. And it's a good one for sand fleas, for regular fleas. It also um, will repel the chiggers as well. So those are some things that you can do to easily create something. Now, if you want to create a spray for yourself, I would recommend putting uh, your essential oils together in a spray bottle and then adding witch hazel. And then you can add water and the witch hazel will keep your oils suspended in the water so that you have a, you know, a fairly easy, you know, a, a good coverage that's, that's um, uniform. <clears throat> so there's that. And this is all on the documents that you can go ahead and upload if you so choose. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about was the other side of that stick. When you forget to put your spray on, <laughs> And, oh, another thing too is you, you know, you can always create, a, if you don't want to do a spray, you could put it in some coconut oil and use it as a, you know, a moisturizer for your skin, rub it on that way. Um, <clears throat> shea butter and coconut oil together have actually an SPF of about 15, so that gives you a little bit of sun protection, and then you could add your, um, your, essential oils into that and use it that way. Some natural ways to treat the bites that you get when you forget to put your insect repellent on, which depending on where you live could only take one time. But one of the absolute best herbs for this period is plantain. And plantain is everywhere right now. This is its favorite time of year is the springtime. And you can identify plantain, no, not the banana, the plant, because it has long, it has vertical, deep veins in the leaves. It doesn't have a lot of sideways veins it, and horizontal veins. It has just real deep vertical ones, and it'll have a stalk going straight up 
um, with the seed pods on the top. There are two different kinds of plantain. There is a broad leaf and a narrow leaf. And if you Google it, you can get a good picture of where it, what it looks like. And then I promise you, you will find it. You'll find it in the cracks in the sidewalk. You'll find it on the sides of the driveway. You'll find it in the grass. You probably weed whack it all the time. So plantain is your best friend for insect bites. Plantain sucks out toxins. So it's good for any kind of a, um, any kind of a bite, a spider bite. I've used it on spider bites, a snake bite. I used plantain on my dog's nose when she got bit by a copperhead and the vet didn't even have to do anything. They just charged me 350 bucks, kept her overnight and sent her home the next day. But I packed her nose really good with plantain and some bentonite clay and drove her to the vet and she, um, was all swollen up and I was really worried about her but the next day when I went to get her they said what was all that stuff all over her face and when I told them what I'd done they said well we didn't have to do anything so um, but I have used plantain when I have sliced my fingers in my wood shop I about cut my thumb off one time and I ran out and got a plantain leaf and chewed it up a little bit and wrapped it around my finger and stuck a band-aid on there and by the end of the day it had already started healing up but it is great for um, sucking toxins out so I have created a plantain spray that I put aloe and lavender and some anti um, parasitical and antifungal type herbs in it but it is really great for poison ivy or acne because you can it'll just immediately start drying out the toxins I also make a plantain ointment and I did that mainly because I got a spider bite on the back of my leg and I couldn't spray upside down couldn't see what I was doing so I turned it into an ointment and rubbed it on there and sucked all the spider bite juice out of the back of my leg I didn't even have a scar so plantain is everywhere people go familiarize yourself with it and pull yourself up some you can dry it you can take it internally you can it, it, it's definitely needs to be a household word you need to use plantain because it does many many things and chiggers hate it if you rub plantain ointment over chiggers immediately it stops the itching but then it starts drawing and the chiggers they hate it they are out of there in no time. So those are two things that you can treat any kind of bite with, mosquitoes, like I said, tick bites, anything. It's one of your, your go-to herbs for sure. And the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about <clears throat> is natural antidotes. Some of us are able to get out and hike around and get out into the woods and um, sometimes we get into stuff that isn't so friendly like poison ivy or poison oak or sumac you know just things that are irritating to your skin and nature has made a wonderful provision for us because here's the rule and this is something you can teach your children within five feet of the toxic plant is the antidote if you don't believe me go check it out find some poison ivy in my case it's I mostly have poison ivy I might have some poison oak somewhere but mostly mine's poison ivy and if I look within five feet which is as tall as I am I will find the antidote and for me it's Virginia creeper which looks a lot like poison ivy only it has five leaves instead of three it's a vine just like that and if you get if you brush up against the, the toxic plant and you can feel your skin already starting to buzz reach over grab the leaves of that antidote plant and rub it right on there and immediately it will neutralize the toxins from that plant is that not the coolest thing so you don't have to run home and grab your plantain spray or anything else if you are out in nature and you can keep your wits about you and observe what what's growing and where you will identify the antidote plants 
that are round. Now, sometimes it's not Virginia creeper. It might be something else. So what you need to do is be aware when you're in your hiking areas and when you know that there's a patch of poison oak right there, look around and see what you see the most of. Because more than likely, and then, you know, get the app up on your phone and Google it. Or um, there are plenty of plant identification apps. You could take a picture of it and pull it up and and identify the, the plants around you so that you know where your antidote plants are because you don't always have something handy to take care of it. But nature has, has got your back on that. So test it. See if I'm right or if I'm wrong. <clears throat> Trust me, I've done it a lot. In fact, just yesterday I had to do that. I got myself into some poison ivy. And with all this rain, yeah, we've got plenty of it. So those are the things that I wanted to bring to your attention this week. I wanted you to enjoy some outside time and um, not be afraid of the bugs and the, the other things that kind of have a tendency to ruin it for us sometimes. We can take care of things naturally. Uh, you can even, you know, if you don't have any of these essential oils in your house right now, at, but you've got a lemon, you can squeeze a lemon into a spray bottle with a little bit of witch hazel or water or even alcohol and use that as a, a natural insect repellent. You will be amazed how well that works. Thyme is another one. I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but thyme is a great insect repellent and that's easy to grow. It's a, it's a culinary herb. They don't like it at all. So <clears throat> Thyme and there and peppermint. Peppermint is an easy one, and it repels flies. It repels mosquitoes, as does thyme. They're kind of in the same family. They're both in the mint family. So, you know, throw together some things that you've got growing around, and make yourself up some natural insect repellent. You can rub that stuff in your hair, so that you don't get those nasty little gnats and bugs flying around your face. And, um, it's great. It's really great. I like to take thyme oil and I, dri I pour it onto rolled up pieces of paper towel and I put them around the bottom of my windows. I, you know, even when my windows are closed. And it repels the mosquitoes, the spiders, and those little crawly bugs that somehow manage to get in even when the window's shut. So, <clears throat> I, you know, you'll see little wadded up paper towels all around my windowsills where I've put thyme oil on there. It's an easy way to keep your house bug free and your skin bug free. So you can pick these things up off the uh, from the Facebook uh, from the link that's posted right before the post. Now I wanted to take a couple minutes and I wanted to say thank you to my lovely illustrator. Her name is Amanda Pascal. She just happens to be my daughter-in-law. I'm lucky. She has been the one providing us with these awesome pages for the kids. And this week, it is so great. She's got this one here, this coloring page. I don't know if you can see it. It says, don't bug me. And it's got all of these different bugs and her natural insect repellent. So this is a great coloring page. And then she's created a matching game for the kids and you will you would pick a bug and then you would pick an herb or a spray that either repels that bug or um, remedies the situation you got poison ivy what takes care of poison ivy and she's got all the choices there so they can play the matching game with this and color it <clears throat> and cut it out and, uh, you know, it gives them something to do while they're um, being homeschooled and it's having to stay home a lot. And it's educational. Take them outside. See if you guys can identify plantain. See if you can make your own homemade insect re repellent. Um, and just get them to, to have an appreciation and a knowledge about herbs so that they're not fearful. They, they can handle things. They can handle things by themselves. They know what to do. And let's empower the children. So thank you, Mandy, for these pages. And 
Um, if you are interested, she is a um, an illustrator of children's books, and she has a wonderful talent and very whimsical, beautiful art. So she does have um, a Facebook page, Amanda Pascal Illustration, and she has a website, Amanda Pascal's uh, Illustration, and it's P-A-S-C-H-A-L. So check her out and um, enjoy her her artwork it'll bring a smile to your face it's really really fun and I thank you guys for being with me this Thursday night I look forward to seeing you again next week next week we're going to talk about some things one of which is zinc and how zinc is being used in in the antiviral treatments but also how it is part of um, a, it works in your sunscreen and other things that it does for your body. So we're going to cover a, a, a couple other real interesting topics next week, and I am looking forward to seeing you then. Have a wonderful weekend, a magical Easter if that is your holiday, and stay well, and I will see you next week. <laughs>